Uh, because motion capture was, was such a closed system for so long, there were very few people doing it regularly. It was the same, it was honestly, it was the same five people who did absolutely everything. Uh, and th there's a couple of reasons for that. One, you know, when you are, when your likeness is not part of the package, you can play dozens and dozens and dozens of characters and nobody is the wiser. As long as you're a reasonably good actor, you know, no one's gonna know it's you every time, so that's not an issue. Um, but the second reason is because it is quite a specific skill, uh, people didn't want to take a chance on somebody new just for the sake of it. You know, they thought, well, this guy works, this, this woman works, I'm going to stick with them. I like working with them, they do a good job, I'm going to stick with them. So for, for honestly, for maybe 12 years, it was just me and the same four or five other people doing absolutely everything. And that meant that the greater acting community didn't know anything about motion capture and then Andy Serkis comes along and he's you know talking about this great world of motion capture and suddenly people are starting to notice it but they still don't know anything about it and so it was um, on one particular job uh, 007 Legends which was a, an Activision game where um, they had a really good casting process and they were bringing in um, very experienced TV and theatre actors uh, to do this job and I would see time and time again they could never achieve their best because they spent the first half of the day just orienting themselves to a completely new environment. No audience, no cameras, no lights, no costume, um, no understanding of animation, no understanding of video games, no understanding of uh, character rigs and the simplicity of them and how much uh, gets lost in the translation between reality and uh, digital animation, particularly at that time. And so they would, they would fall back on the only thing they knew how to do, which was performing for theatre or performing for film. Those that performed for film would underplay everything. Uh, they, there was, you know, when you saw it on the, the final character, it, it would look completely dead. Those that were performing for theatre wouldn't appreciate that there's still a camera in the scene, that they would have to modify their, the size of their performance depending on their proximity from the camera. And so they were just all over the place. And the, the sad thing is these were good actors. These were people who were doing really well in theatre and, and TV and film. And so the director on that project was a guy called John Dower. And uh, we would spend a lot of evenings kind of hanging out after the shoots and just talking about it. He'd worked on Milo and Kate, um, the project that never came out, uh, sadly. But he'd had a lot of experience seeing uh, what the actors did and what it looked like on animation. And we both agreed that it was a real shame that these actors weren't able to give better performances because they simply didn't understand the medium they were working in. And so at that time, we came up with the idea of uh, sharing what we'd learned with, with actors. So we started to teach uh, classes. In the beginning, it was uh, really difficult to fill a classroom of 12 people. You know, we'd get eight people. Mo half of them would be martial artists or dancers. They wouldn't be actors. And um, they just wanted to work in motion capture. They didn't appreciate that it was a, a, a different art form. You know, I get emails from people that say, I'm a martial artist. I was born to do motion capture. How do I get into it? And I would have to explain to them, it's not that simple. There's actually quite a lot of nuance to this, to this art form. So over the years, um, you would see more mocap movies. You would see more behind the scenes featurettes from Avatar or you know whatever. And, and actors started to go, hang on a second, this is a legitimate medium. People I know are getting work in, in this sphere. You know, they're getting their head scans, their likenesses uh, going into these projects. I wanna do this. Our classes started to fill up more and more. And now you know, people book three months in advance to go to one of our classes. Um, we have a, a curriculum, so we teach an introduction to motion capture you know, as a whole, and then we teach a whole day just on creating characters, because character really is the, the fundamental principle. Uh, I often say that the, the, the best thing about motion capture is also the most challenging thing, and that is that you can play anybody, which is great, but you also need to be able to play anybody. And so, you know, actors who spent their careers playing a certain type of person suddenly have to stretch beyond 
uh, their visual appearance. They're not just playing the same guy with the same accent. They're playing a completely different person um, in every, every project. And then we teach actors about environment, how to create a completely imaginary world from, from their own mind because they're working in these empty warehouses. And then we start to put them in the suits and run them through scenes and teach them how to apply those skills to a real industry setting. And then we have a big event, which is kind of like a graduation ceremony called the MoCap Summit, where we have actors, animators, technicians, um, directors, all coming together for two days to create motion capture, to learn how to use the technology and to actually make, make art. Mm -hmm.